for Gabby. What I wanted to just do today, this will be the last on the Redox, and it's really going through a practice problem so we can see what to do. So hi, Gabby. Um, now this, I'll first look at a reaction, and we'll work through it, and then I'll show you the science scribe that you can see up on the screen at the moment. So let's look at the reaction. Now, you've got to remember that triangle I was speaking about with the macro level. So you have to describe what you see. So you, you must say that sodium hypochlorite is a colorless solution. OK, so give the color and the state for each reactant. Um, so that's the macro part. We'll also have to say what color and state the potassium iodide is in. Then you do the um, microscopic level, which is you've got to explain um, what particle is being reduced or what element is being, uh, actually what species is being reduced and why. So you look at the oxidation number of the element and see how it changes from the reactant to the product. So we've done the macro description, and then we must do the micro. And then the model is your calculations, uh, not calculations, your equations. So if you have a quick look at this reaction, you can see I've got this colorless solution. I must admit it does look a little bit colored coming down, but that's from the con contamination. It's actually uh, a colorless solution coming in. I think you can see it there. And then the solution that was colorless turns reddish brown. So you've got to say, what makes that reddish brown solution? If I just sort of stop it there. Uh, oh, I'm not very good at stopping it there. That should stop. So that reddish brown solution, what has caused that reddish brown solution? What is the color of the other products that we can't perhaps see? OK, we may only get one product, or we have more than one product. So you will get, in the task, a series of photos showing this progress of reaction. So I'll give you the, um, a photo of each reactant, and then you'll just see the reaction change until you get your, the end of the reaction. So let's look at an example. Um, Declan, I know you've got this one already. Uh, actually, let me go over to this one. And I'll make it bigger so you can actually see. These are just some practice problems I put together. Now, um, here's the soap. So you'll get something like this, except you'll get a few more photos. So it's a sodium hypochlorite. You can see it's colorless. The potassium iodide is colorless. And you can see the color is changing until we've just got the reddish brown solution. So now you've got to give the answer. So there are a few questions that you must explain. So in the task, you will be asked to, now I just want to check, can you, I want to make this as big as possible, can you read that? Can you read, link any observations? So Gabby is typing. So this section up here, link any observations such as color chart, you can. Great. OK. So remember, we were reacting sodium hypochlorite and potassium iodide. The first thing you need to do is try and get rid of those spectator ions. You don't want spectator ions cluttering up your half reactions, because you'll go wrong, because you'll leave one in there, and you won't have it balanced properly. So. Group 1 elements won't get reduced, just like sodium ions won't go to sodium metal because, I mean, as far as level 2 goes, because what's going to happen is you're going to get um, the sodium metal reacting straight away with the water solution. And we don't make things complicated for you at level 2. So the first thing you do, if I just scroll up, is when you get given substances, think of the spectator ions. Potassium is a group 1 element. Sodium is a group 1 element. They're not going to be involved in the reaction. The only way they're going to be involved in the reaction if you've got no water around, as far as your level 2 goes. So 
What is important is the hypochlorite, which hopefully you will know is OCl minus, and then the iodide, which I hope you know is I minus. If you don't know, it's not the end of the world because we do give you a lot of help. So the first thing you have to do, and again, you don't have to write equa um, formulae, you can just write the name. Say what the color of your reactants are. So give both of them. So you say the colorless solution of hypochlorite is added to the colorless solution of iodide. Can you see I have described both reactants with the state and the color? Don't, by the way, use the word clear. Does the, clear, does the word clear mean colorless? Nobody wants to have a go or not? You've got a 50% chance of being right. It's either yes or it's no. OK, nobody having a go. Clear just simply means transparent. So you could have a clear blue solution, like copper sulfate. The solution is blue, but you can see through it. So that's what the word clear means. It really means there's no murkiness. You can see through it. Colorless means there's no color. OK, so like these are colorless and clear. OK, this is not colorless, but it is actually fairly clear, uh, although there may be a starting a bit of a, a solid coming in there. Um, OK, so we've done the reactants. Now you do the products. So what are the products? If you don't know what the products are, turn to the resource material, where the photos are, you're going to get the periodic table and you are going to get a list of two other tables. So there will be three tables given. One is a list of a substance going to another. And notice they are all written as reduction half reactions. So you know a redox reaction has to have a reduction and an oxidation. So you've got to have something on the left-hand side and something on the right-hand side. Oh, actually, let me highlight the, the yellow because those are the reactants. So I'm reacting an iodide. So if you were trying to look for potassium iodide, Ki, you're not going to find it because I'm only using the ions that react. I've kicked out, I've ignored the spectator ions. So you're reacting the iodide with the hypochlorite. Notice that they are on opposite sides of the equation. So you know if this is written as a reduction going from left to right, it's obviously not balanced, then it has to be oxidation if I starting from this as a reactant and going to iodine. Does that make sense? Will you be able to work out that iodide has gone to iodine? Yep. Because it tells you. So even if you looked at this and you weren't sure what was happening, go to the tables and have a look. Look for your starting material, your reactants. The hardest part is, remember, breaking up the substance into the spectator ions and, to, and the reacting species. So it's the iodide that's reacting and it forms iodine. The hypochlorite forms chloride. There's no other option given. OK, now you need to then look at the other table to see what the color is. So when we're writing our statement down, our description of the macro level, we say the colorless hypochlorite solution reacts with a colorless iodide solution to form the reddish brown Look at the color that's given here rather than the table, but it, we will ac accept a fairly wide variety to form a reddish brown solution. And you've got to say what makes that solution reddish brown. So you look at your table, the second table that's given, and it's the iodine has that brown solution. So you know it's the iodine that forms it. Your other product is chloride. 
Now, I didn't put everything in here, but it's a whole long table. So you look for chloride and you see what color it is. Uh, are there any questions on the first part? Do you need this part for merit under the new clarifications? Under the old clar last year's clarifications, um, you needed to have it also for achieve level. But you must link your colors to the reactants and the products. So do you think you can do it? OK, right. So make sure you give both both reactants and both products, if there are two products. Sometimes it forms the same thing. Like I could react H2S with SO3 um, and get only sulfur being formed. Um, so, or I could have just one substance like hydrogen peroxide, and that's both my oxidant and reductant, and I'm forming oxygen gas and water. So sometimes it's one going to two and two going to one, but otherwise most of them are two reactants going to two products. The next thing you have to do, so we've done the macro level, is we have to write balanced equations for the model part, and we have to explain it. OK, so you have to explain it. And that's the um, micro level where we're explaining what's happening at the um, particle level. So the first thing you do is you write your balanced half equation. Now, try and get into the habit of writing also the state in brackets. At level two, it's not that important, but it's good training for level three if you're going to be continuing on with chemistry. Now make sure when you write it down, so it's your iodide going to iodine, that is very simple because you just get it from your table. So you just write iodide going to iodine. Now you start doing the balancing. What is the first thing you balance when you're trying to balance a reaction? Atoms. So if I just go back to the skeleton equation there, I've got I minus, so I going to I2. Do I have the same number of atoms on each side? No. So that's why I've added a 2 in front of the I minus to make the number of iodine, uh, you know, iodine atoms the same. I mean, I know that's an ion, but I want to get the same number of iodines <laughs> on each side. So I've got two iodines, or two I's, on the left-hand side, and I've got two I's on the right-hand side. All my atoms are balanced now. This is a nice, straightforward reaction. The next thing I balance is what? So it's always at first atoms, then anybody want to have a go? Then the electrons. OK, then the electrons and charge. This is done more or less in the same one, although you double check with the charge as well. So to do um, balance your uh, electrons, you know that I have to either lose or gain electrons, and you know if I've reversed this reaction, I have oxidized. That's oxidation. So I must have lost electrons. So you should, if you have to write from the right-hand side going to the left-hand side, you should have some electrons when you're writing it out properly on the right-hand side. There should be a product because it's been given off. OK? So that's a tip. So even if you're not sure what's happening, as long as you can follow those <laughs> those steps, you'll get it right. Um, so I have got two negatives on the left-hand side. That is neutral. So to balance my overall charge, I've got to have two negatives on the right-hand side as well. And I do that by adding electrons. Now you should also double check, just in case you haven't made a, sim a silly error, to think of your oxidation numbers. My oxidation number of, I min of iodine and I minus is what? So remember rule number four, the same as the charge for simple ions. Well done, Declan. It's negative one. 
what is the oxidation number of iodine in the iodine molecule? Naught. So can you see that each iodide has lost one electron? So because I've got two of them, two iodides have lost two electrons. So that is a good double check in case you made a silly error. And then the final thing is if you were using oxidation numbers to get work out your number of electrons, do your charge balance at the end to be 100% sure that your equation is correct. Okay, so you also need to say whether this was an oxidation or a reduction half reaction. So if we're going from right to left, it must be an oxidation, and we know that because we've lost electrons. We also know that because of oxidation number. So this is where the, um, it's important to explain at the uh, particle level. The amount of detail is important for merit and excellence. So you have to give the exact number of electrons transferred. At achieve level, if you got the equation right, we'll just accept the two electrons. At merit level, you have to say how many have been lost by what. Because do I say iodide has lost one electron, or do I say that iodide has lost two electrons? Can you see, I could argue both, but depending on how I write it. So don't just say iodide's been oxidized because it's lost an electron, or because it's gained, uh, so because it's lost two electrons. You haven't told me how many iodides. So can you see, I've been very specific. I've said this means that each iodide ion Okay, so each iodide ion has lost one electron. Or you could have said that two iodide ions have lost two electrons, because that's what your equation is showing. As long as you're though very clear of how many electrons have been lost by what. Okay, so the key words is each, or two, or whatever it is, how many electrons uh, and then whether they've been lost or gained. So that's what we're looking for at merit level. Or if you stuffed that one up, we also accept if you worked out the oxidation number of the element. Can you see that's just the element? And because you only get oxidation number of elements, you can't get oxidation numbers of molecules or ions or anything like that. It's always of the element. And do you notice I spell it out? The oxidation number of iodine, I don't just say changes from minus 1 to 0. I say it changes from minus 1 in iodide to 0 in iodine. OK. So be very specific. Tell me what the new species is where I'm calculating the oxidation number for that particular element is in. OK. So I need for excellence a full statement like that. The oxidation number of the element in each species, so in the reactant and in the product. You've got to tell me the oxidation number. And then you've got to tell me the specific thing and how many electrons it has lost or gained, and therefore that it has been oxidized. Okay. So I've said you've got to say the exact number. Don't say it's lost electrons, because that's too vague. It won't get you merit. It'll give you achieved, but not merit. Any questions so far? Nope? OK. Let's do the other half. Now, as I said, the clarifications have changed. So you have to get both the oxidation and the reduction part correct in order to achieve merit or excellence just to, to different levels. So let's look at the next one uh, where we're now looking at, uh, we've done the oxidation, so now we're doing the reduction. And if I can just go to page up here, if we're going from OCl minus to Cl minus, we're going from left to right, so that will be the reduction. 
Remember that table we give you is always, all of those reactions are written as a reduction. So if I have to balance this, my OCl minus goes to Cl minus, I first have to balance atoms. So I've got one Cl on the left hand side, I've got one Cl on the right hand side. Brilliant. However, I've got oxygen on the left hand side, I don't have any on the right hand side. How do I add oxygen? Do I add it as O, O2, or H2O? H2O, correct. Because you've got to add a species that's already there. And remember, this is in a solution, so water is available. But we haven't bubbled oxygen gas through, so oxygen gas is not available. And we certainly don't have oxygen atoms floating around individually. So we have to write down the sort of species that are there. So you have to write plus H2O on the right-hand side. But if I've added high, uh, H2O on the right-hand side, I've now added another element, hydrogen. So I've got two hydrogens now on the right-hand side. How do I add them on the left-hand side? I add them as H+, plus because you will get hydrogen ions in a water aqueous water solution. So don't say H2 gas, because I'm not bubbling hydrogen gas through there, but I do have some H+. Plus. So here was my OCl going to Cl-. minus. Then we had to add one water to add the oxygen to balance out this oxygen. And remember, water is a liquid. Then because we had now two hydrogen uh, atoms on the, left hand, on the right hand side, we had to add two on the left hand side. So we've done an atom balance. The next thing now is your electron balance, charge balance together. So um, I'll first do it with the oxidation number method. What is my oxidation number of um, Cl minus in a, a hypochlorite? Would anybody like to work it out? Plus 1. Because remember, oxygen in any compound is minus 2, unless it's peroxide. So it's minus 2 there, and it's minus 2 there. So we know that oxygen hasn't changed, because it's still minus 2. The chloride, though, if that's minus 2, and the sum of the oxidation number of oxygen and chloride is equal to minus 1, the same with the char as it's charged, remember rule 6, that means we've got x minus 2 is equal to minus 1, so x is equal to plus 1. So it's changing from positive 1 to, this is rule number 4, what is the oxidation number of chlorine and chloride? Minus 1. So it's changed from plus 1 to minus 1. So if we're going from plus 1 to 0 and 0 to minus 1, we have made two hops. So we have gained two electrons. So that's working out the number of electrons gained or lost using oxidation numbers. Our charge balance will prove that to us. We've got one negative there. All electrons are always negative, so two negatives giving me, me a total of three negatives, with two positives giving me an overall of um, one negative. And can you see water is neutral, so I've only got one negative on the right-hand side. So I've got a charge of minus one overall on the left-hand side, and I've got a charge of minus one overall on the right-hand side. So we know that equation is balanced. Okay. Sometimes you can make multiple errors that all cancel each other out, but they're still all there. But generally, if your charge is balanced, you've done the right thing. And you know it's a reduction. OK, so if you've done that, you definitely got achieved. This is now where we get to the merit level again, because you've got to have done it for both the oxidation and the reduction. You've got to tell me either how much each um, 
hypochlorite ion has gained and the exact number of electrons. Don't just say each OCL minus has gained electrons, okay? Or OCL minus has gained electrons. You're not going to get merit. You need to say exactly what ion you're talking about and how many it has gained. So you can do either that way or you can say, right, let me work out the oxidation numbers and write it down. So it's the oxidation number of the element, because oxidation numbers is the property of an element, not a molecule or anything. And we've worked out it was plus one in this species, in the reactant, and it was minus one in that species, the reactant, or the, the, the product. So, you know, if you have either of those, you'll get merit. Um, and the same actually for excellence. For excellence, uh, ideally you have both, um, but what's important for excellence is can you now add the two half reactions up and get the final equation? So what we have to do here, this is a fairly straightforward one because it just so happens that my um, oxidation half reaction has lost two electrons and my reduction half reaction has gained two electrons. Um, what would happen if my oxidation was only one electron, it had only lost one? What would I have to do? I'd have to multiply this whole thing by two because I have to make sure that the number of electrons lost is the same as the number of electrons gained. In this case, they're the same, so I just simply add up. So OCL minus aqueous, oh, that should have been a plus there, plus iodide aqueous, two of them, plus, now the electrons have cancelled out, so plus the hydrogen uh, ion, so that's all the reactants we've got here. It was that and that and that, because remember our electrons have cancelled out. And then now we just write down all the products. Always check carefully. There's no time limit. Spend time checking that you haven't left something out, because that's quite a common error that you leave something out. So it's the chloride you put down, okay, the water you put down, and the iodine you put down. And again, we ignore the electrons because they should have cancelled out. Okay. Any questions on getting excellence in this task? Nope. Okay. So what I'm just going to do now, I'm going to show you, um, okay, sorry, not that one, this one. If you just Google Science Scribe and you go to level, um, you'll see something like this. Uh, well, that's what you come up with, first of all. So uh, if you Google Science Scribe, you should be getting that. And you just go to level two chemistry. And then you'll see this is actually a very good source of all sorts of things. They've got, um, if, if you want a lovely summary chart of the CH2.4 standard, I, I really recommend it. Just download it and print it, OK? Uh, the same thing for organic chemistry. That's really great. Um, and then he's got an interactive for the um, re oxidation reduction. So you just click on this web, and then you get something like this. So look up. LU means look up. QU means question, so you generate a random question. Look up, remember I said you look up the tables, so they do something here as well. So if I just generate a random question, so can you see here a student used five moles of sodium hydrogen sulfide by adding it to hydrogen peroxide. So those are my two reactants, sodium hydrogen sulfide and peroxide. You then go to the table by looking it up. Okay, and there you look now and you look for hydrogen peroxide. Now hydrogen peroxide, you notice, will come in both. So just have a look. If hydrogen sulfate appears here but not there, then you know this is the first one and that's, that's the other one is the oxidant. Uh, 
we haven't done it quite as oxidants reductants because we're not allowed to do it like that. But it's like looking at the left and the right hand side. So it gives you the um, skeleton equation for each one and it tells you, now I can't actually move my cursor off here, but can you see it, it tells you it's colorless to colorless. So you've got to link up that the hydrogen sulfide is colorless and the sulfate is colorless. If you go to hydrogen peroxide, then it's also colorless to colorless. So if you were doing, going back to the question, okay, oh, I will say with this, if you do look up, I, I recommend two different screens, because when you go back, it, it's generated another question. So you'd, you'd look it up, but then what you would do then is write down your observations. Remember, that's your macro level. So I hope you can read that. When purple permanganate reacts with colorless hydrogen, uh, hydrogen peroxide, it forms colorless permanganate and the colorless gas. Notice the color and the state given. Then you look, write down your observation, uh, your um, explanation. So notice how they give you the oxidation state or oxidation number, same thing. Okay, it's the oxidation state of the element in the species is seven, and the oxidation state of, of the element in the species, and then you say what it is. That's important, particularly for excellence. Okay, and then you do the same thing for the other side. Um, then you explain the exact number of electrons. So I've said each, like each permanganate, you could say one mole of permanganate, doesn't really matter, as long as you specify how many of that species will and how many electrons it will gain. So if you're saying one mole, it gains five moles. If you said each permanganate gains five electrons. Okay, and then there's your half equations. It shows you if you've got a right or, and there's the full equation. So what you can do is go to the site, just generate random questions, Okay, and if it doesn't work, just keep on clicking and you'll get something. I suggest having the lookup on a different screen, <laughs> uh, you know, a different tab. Work through it, see if you can do it, and then just check your answers by clicking on, you know, half reactions, full uh, reaction, observations, oxidation number of electron. Any questions on that? Nope. Okay, so hopefully you all get excellence now if you go through this, and as, as, as long as you're very methodical. The, to me, the only tricky thing is, is getting rid of the spectator ions. <laughs>